Good morning and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in San Diego. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Tuesday, March 19th. Goodness gracious, I missed you all so much yesterday. Did you miss me? We were having a bit of technical difficulty, but have no fear. Sunny Mornings is here, and we're back with a great show for you today. I'd also like to just take a moment and say thank you so much for joining me every morning. It means the world to me. And I see that some of you are in different cities all over the U.S. and even in different countries. That's awesome. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know where you are joining from and what do you think about the show? Is there anything you'd like more of? Drop us a message on Instagram or shoot us an email. Info at sunnymorningspodcast.com is where you'll find me. That's info at sunnymorningspodcast.com. Coming up on today's show, we'll get into the surf report and the weather outlook. Then we'll jump into some local news and a few interesting happenings in business, tech, and entertainment. But first, you'll be interested to know, today is National Let's Laugh Day. So go find the funniest person you know and ask them to tell you a joke or just watch an episode of Seinfeld. Kramer will have you laughing in no time. So now you know. And now you know what time it is. It's time for the surf report. It's a mix of Northwest and South-Southwest swells. Expect need to waste highways at most spots with chest high sets at winter standout locations. Light and variable wind in the morning will shift to light westerly onshore in the afternoon. Wednesday sees the continuation of these conditions with the addition of a new south-southwest swell maintaining need to waste high surf with potential chest high waves at favored spots. Tuesday at Tourmaline and South San Diego, it's looking clean at two to three feet until 10. Then we'll have another hour before the chop suey rolls in to spoil the fun. Mornings are where it's at for the next few days. Best time to ride is Dawn Patrol, so you can get on that four foot high tide when the west swell is one foot at 18 seconds and wind is three mile per hour. It looks like a longboard day. The first high tide Tuesday will be four and a half feet at 6.15 a.m. with a minus half foot low tide at 2.15. The nearshore buoy at Scripps in La Jolla reads 61 degrees for the water temperature. Checking out the weather in the San Diego area. This morning, it's partly cloudy and 64 degrees with little wind. The sunset will take place at seven and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.51. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It looks like we're in for mostly sun today with a high near 70 and wind of five to 10 mile per hour. Tonight, patchy fog late with a low around 53. Looking ahead in the weather. Wednesday brings morning fog transitioning to mostly sunny skies with highs near 69 degrees. At night, expect fog and clouds, dipping to 53 degrees. The Thursday to Friday features similar patterns with gradual clearing and highs near 69 degrees. The weekend cools slightly with Saturday partly sunny at 67 degrees, leading to a cloudy night at 53. Sunday introduces a chance of rain with partly sunny conditions and a cooler high near 62. Bonjour, food enthusiasts. This podcast is brought to you by Versailles Cafe and Pastries in Encinitas. Nestled on El Camino Real South, just north of Encinitas Boulevard, this cafe is a haven for culinary delights. Indulge in their amazing Eggs Benedict or their gluten-free crepes. You can grab a panini for lunch or just breeze on through to get your morning coffee. They are open every day from eight to five. So stop on by and don't forget to tell them, Sunny Morning sent you. I'm sorry to report, Blake Snell, a two-time Cy Young Award winner, has inked a two-year, 
$62 million contract with the San Francisco Giants, enriching their pitching staff. This deal, coming just before opening day, includes an opt-out after the first year. Snell signing is part of the Giants' impactful off-season moves, including acquiring Matt Chapman and several other key players, showcasing their ambitious team-building strategy. Snell's performance with the San Diego Padres, leading in ERA and other metrics, sets high expectations for his tenure with the Giants. Now on to sports. The Pittsburgh Steelers acquiring Justin Fields has sparked speculation about his future with the team, especially regarding his $25.7 million fifth-year option. With Fields positioned as the backup quarterback behind newly signed Russell Wilson, the likelihood of the Steelers committing to such a substantial financial guarantee appears slim. ESPN's Adam Schefter suggests it would be surprising if Pittsburgh opts for the fifth-year extension before seeing Fields perform within their system. While the door remains open for Fields to secure a long-term deal based on his performance, the immediate focus is on his adaptation to the Steelers' playbook and potential future contributions. Last night in the NBA, the Lakers at home beat the Hawks 136-105. And in national hockey, the Ducks on the road lost to the Blues 4-2. Tonight, the Ducks are back home to skate with the Wild, and the Kings are at home too, taking on the Blackhawks. In top news, the U.S. is taking significant strides toward developing a lunar economy, with NASA's Artemis program aiming to return humans to the moon and foster a space where NASA isn't the only customer. DARPA, known for supporting emerging technologies, has joined the effort with its Luna 10 study, aiming to understand how to create a thriving lunar economy by 2035. Working with major space and non-space firms, DARPA is exploring services like power and communications for the moon. Major, Michael Warbit Nyack, the program manager, has identified six technological areas that could accelerate the lunar economy, ranging from centralized heating and cooling to silicon wafer manufacturing and a lunar GPS system. While DARPA's request for information does not guarantee funding, it marks a clear interest in lunar commercial activities and could lead to federal support for innovative solutions. In business news, Reddit is poised to enter Wall Street, but its IPO might not signal a broader market revival. Despite a previous $10 billion valuation, experts now suggest a more realistic $6.4 billion. With revenue growth slowing and no profitability, Reddit's stock could mimic the cyclical nature of peers like Snapchat and Pinterest. The IPO is generating interest especially among Reddit users, and boasts notable investors like Condé Nast and Sam Altman. However, competition and concerns over ad revenue sustainability could temper long-term excitement, keeping eyes on potential future IPOs from larger unicorns. In crypto movement, Bitcoin is just under $64,000. Ethereum is at $3,300. And Solana is just booming at $183. Moving on to a more local vibe. In our community spotlight on health and wellness, we are working with a national Pilates studio to bring you some free classes, so listen up. Check out Club Pilates with several locations in the San Diego area. Pilates presents a comprehensive wellness approach cultivating strength, reducing tension, and elevating mental well-being. Scientific research affirms its benefits. So now you can check out Club Pilates for a free class with locations in Encinitas, Solana Beach, Oceanside, La Jolla, and more. Just be sure to tell them Sunny Morning sent you by. And now, 
back to the show. Let's talk science. A lunar sample return bag containing moon dust from Neil Armstrong's historic 1969 moon landing, initially missing, sold for $1.8 million at auction by Nancy Lee Carlson, who had previously purchased it for under $1,000. This bag, inadvertently auctioned off by the U.S. Marshals Service, was legally purchased by Carlson for $995. NASA's attempt to reclaim the artifact was denied by a federal court, marking a rare instance where lunar material legally entered private ownership. This case underscores the complex history and value of space artifacts, highlighting both the challenges of preserving national treasures and the intense interest in space memorabilia. And in entertainment news, a new mural by the world-famous street artist Banksy has appeared overnight in a North London neighborhood, sparking curiosity and excitement among locals and visitors alike. This latest work features bright green paint that mimics foliage behind a large tree alongside a portrait of a young person holding a pressure sprayer. The appearance of the mural has transformed the area into a hub of activity, with people from various backgrounds coming together to speculate on the artwork's meaning and implications for the community. Amidst concerns about rising rents and discussions on environmental messages, the artwork has prompted a broader conversation about public art's role in urban spaces and its potential to inspire community dialogue and reflection. Well, alrighty, folks, it's time for the quote of the day. And today, our quote comes from Banksy himself. If you don't know who Banksy is, we'll post some of his art on our Instagram page. I've been lucky enough to stumble upon some of his work out in the wild. Or you can search for Exit Through the Gift Shop on YouTube. It's a great documentary about the anonymous artist. So now we'll end today's show with the words of a master street artist. You don't need planning permission to build castles in the sky. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Okay.